there's testimony services. They're singing, God moves in singing. God moves in testimonies. And a lot of times he moves in his word. And then he'll move after the service. Not after the service, but after the word. Right. But there, there's so many things we're missing the time. And when I say missing the visitation, you're missing when the spirit is moving right. in the service. Right. We're missing that. And we need to yeah. really grab a hold. We hear about Jesus. We're going to read here a little bit in Luke, a little bit. But we hear about Jesus. Because the, and we're going to start reading from probably Luke chapter 19. But we hear about Jesus. And there's a lot of times, as the Lord began to deal with me today, there's a lot of times we're missing when Jesus is actually passing by. We're missing it. How many times the other night, and I don't want to get to where I miss it. Like tonight, the Lord said when Sister Carol was there, she said just... She, it kind of felt like confusion, she said. The Lord said, just go lay hands on her and just pray for her. Yeah. A lot of times if we listen to that spirit, Brother Bo, God will move in her service. So but it don't matter. Look, look at it like this. It don't matter during the preaching. A lot of people said, don't. And disturbing the preach is a different thing. But if the spirit, the spirit knows how to pray for somebody and preach at the same time. Do we understand that the, the spirit knows how to pray for somebody and preach at the same time? Amen. God is everywhere. So if he's dealing with somebody to go lay hands upon somebody, why do you think that they heard so much when Jesus came through? When he came through a town, Brother Bo, he was doing miracles. He's doing signs. He was doing wonders. And the Bible says the signs shall follow them that believe. So if the signs is going to follow the believers, we're going to get out of ourselves and get in what the Spirit Amen. says. How many, how many believes that tonight? We've got to get out of ourselves and follow what the Spirit says. The Bible says the signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. And what is it? He said he give us the Holy Ghost to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. So if Jesus has given us that, you'll go, why do we take and step back from service after service? Somebody needing delivered. Somebody who got needing the touch from the Lord. But still will sit back and say, well, I don't see it that way. Well, God's ways, his, his ways confound the, the, the wise. And Lord God, he's more, his, his foolish is more wise than any wise man that ever hit this earth. And God, there ain't no foolishness about him. But if there was foolishness, his foolishness is wiser than any wise man that ever stepped foot upon this earth that's ever been born into this world. That's my Jesus. That's how why his wisdom is way past. We can't even pile it up, Brother Ronnie. But if we'll just get a hold of our nail scarred hands of Jesus with that spirit starts passing us by, we will not we will not let our visitation go. It's service time after time. It's a passing us by. And we don't well, I don't know if that's God or not. Do you know what I do? I get on my knees and I As I thought about this going up there today, a lot of people's missing their visitation. Yeah. Do you understand in the book of Acts? In the book of Acts, you can read in there, they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They was filled. But then after they got filled, Sister Dory, they got filled again. Amen. Yeah. Over and over. And they believed the word. Yes. You know what they meant? It cost pastors up here. They meant the word they meant to sell. Amen. Glory to God. They got filled again. Peter, yes. and you believe what you want to believe. On the day of Pentecost, they got filled. Yes. And then on there in the scriptures in the book of Acts, they got filled again at the refreshing. Some yes. of us need filled again. Yes. Some of us need refreshed again. Yes. You're missing your visitation. Jesus. Bless you, Lord. We're putting too much 
on what our natural eyes see. Now, I know this is said here a lot. The Lord devil don't like it. Somebody clap their hands and give Jesus some praise. <laughs> We emphasize on too much of how we think it should go. Right. But I want what the Spirit wants. Do what the Bible says. In Luke chapter 19, we're going to read this here. And I'm just going to let God be God. Luke chapter 19 and verse 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man for false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus, this is what Jesus said. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. He wasn't talking about a natural house. He said it's come to this house for as much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Give the Lord a hand, you can be seated. Thank you. Jesus is going to be passing by here tonight. Don't miss your visitation. The Holy Ghost is going to come. Look here, Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus here, he wasn't going to miss his visitation. Even though I thought about it as I come back out of the mountains today, I flipped over just to refresh the mind because the Holy Ghost told me to turn over and read about Zacchaeus. And he began to, to deal with me. And as I read down through, glory to God, people, even though you might look little in people's eyes, and I'm talking about getting the Holy Ghost. Lord, he was all over me today. But a lot of people might look little in other people's eyes. But Lord God, uh, I'm talking about why don't you climb up into a spiritual sycamore tree uh, and Lord God, go past your visitation. Uh, when it comes your way, don't let Jesus uh, get past you. Uh, if you're seeking him, uh, Zacchaeus, I know that he heard about Jesus. Uh, he wanted to see who he was. Uh, do you want to see really who he is? Uh, do you want to see who Jesus really is? Uh, he's more than what man says he is. Uh, he's more than a man. Uh, he's all He's got all compassion, and he knows how to deal with every heart. Every heart's different. You better believe that. Everybody's got a different heart. Yours is different than mine. But God, everybody's is different than mine. Mine's different than yours. But God knows how to get to that heart. Don't let your visitation pass you by. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Come on, amen. Yeah, he does. Here was Zacchaeus. There's so many people being down in the church. Be little. Get all this. That were little right in church. Yeah. Right in the house of worship. Because they're afraid of what somebody's going to say to them. They're afraid if they don't get it right, somebody's going to say something. But Lord God, here was Zacchaeus. You need to, I hope you get a Zacchaeus spirit tonight. I hope you get a hold of what Zacchaeus got a hold of. And said, hey, I know I may be little. I may be pushed down. There may be a crowd here that don't think much of me. But I'm going to climb into a sycamore tree. I'm going to see Jesus. For he must pass this way. Jesus must need to come through from Jericho. Jesus, he must need to come your way tonight. He's after you. He's looking for you. But don't let this moment pass you by. Don't miss your visitation. So many people's letting it go. 
Man, I don't like that. It ain't, look, we got to remember this. It ain't about what we like. Right. It's about what he's doing. Amen. Amen. Come on. You remember the finished product? Yeah, come on. He sees past mine and your faults. Right. You better believe that. He sees when he looked at me, Sister Shador, he saw a finished product for me. Yes. Come on. And there's so many people. I hope that people can grab a hold of this tonight. Look here, Lord, show me. You believe this or not, you take it how you want to. The young's fixed out, grow the old. Why? Lord God, and I'm going to get right in with the young. I'm getting right in with them because I'm going to go to heaven. I don't know that. I ain't saying the old ain't going. But Lord God, don't you ring around and let through your visitation pass you by. Lord God, don't ring around and say it's not that way. I know Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He don't change. But Lord God, what about you? Look like where you were purged from. He brought you out of sin. Preach about this. But Jeff, I was so close at one time. You know what? I, I still get talked about today, but it's all right. All right. Let him say it. You can hear me say it a lot, bro. Let him say it. But buddy, I know the God that I serve. Yes. I know when he spoke to me on that mountain. I know when he talks to me, glory to God. We got to realize the spirit. We've got to recognize the Spirit of God. Amen. I'm talking about the Bible says the Lord is that Spirit. And what the Spirit of the Lord is, he said there's liberty. Yes. Well, God, if you're trying to bind somebody up, keeping somebody else from testifying, keeping somebody else from saving, look at what good are you? I tell you, you better not hear the nun of God's children. The Bible says that one place it says a meal sold should be hanging yes. about your neck and yes. pass into the death of the sea if you tend on one of these little ones. We understand Zacchaeus. Be just like us. And I understand. There's certain places we don't need to go. Right. But what about if Jesus, if you really know the Spirit, what about if Jesus told us to? Right. You got to be sensitive to the Spirit. What are we going to do? I ain't telling you to go down there and lay out in the bar somewhere. I ain't telling you to go to the strip clubs. Right. But let me tell you something. I was reading today, and the Lord took me to this. We take and we classify people that they can't do anything. Put right. signs on them. And then when that happens, we'll get to where our visitation passes us. Right. So here. Let's go all the way back to Joshua. The Lord took me here today, so I know he wants somebody to hear this. Rahab the harlot, she was in God's plan. Yes, she was. She sure was. Bathsheba was in God's plan. Amen. Tamar was in God's plan. Amen. Ruth was in God's plan. Amen. Ruth was a Moabite. She's still in his plan. But she was still in his plan. Amen. Rahab the harlot. That's what she was labeled as in the word of God. Rahab the harlot. But now look at this. All the way down through the lineage. Jesus Christ down through the lineage. Sure it was in God's plan. The flesh side of Jesus. Amen. Come right down through that lineage of Rahab the harlot. Yes. Do we have, evidently, Lord God, you're not reading the Bible. You're not searching the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal yes. life. And then we'll place labels and we say that people may do it. That's why the visitation is passing people by. Amen. Take the limits off. Well, I'm like this. If 
God can't use them, why did God call them? Right. People's missing the visitation. And let me tell you something, young people. Let me tell you something, old people. Don't let nobody let you cause you to miss your visitation. Amen. It don't matter about how bad what they say, no, what no. they do, what they look like, how they look at you. Don't you let that bother you from getting your visitation from Jesus. Amen. Amen. Right. The devil's mad. Buddy, I'm glad. I'm glad. The devil's mad and I'm glad. Yes. But you know what? There ain't no love lost. Right. Don't love him anybody. Right. <laughs> what you gotta realize, here's where this is so tough for people. When people's got their say the fool of the devil. When name's several chases, you got the devil. Right. I got word to, to back all this up. Sure does. But in that, see, I was once I had the devil. Yes. But I didn't have Jesus. But when Jesus called me, then he started qualifying me. Right. He does the qualifying. It wasn't man that done it for me. No. Jesus. It was the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Right. So if Jesus calls you, yes. he qualifies you. Yes. So don't let nobody hinder your visitation. Lord God, somebody's got to get Jesus. this. I tell you, don't you let nobody hinder you your visitation. Because if you get visited by the Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty, do you know you can change your whole family? Do you understand you can change the laws of your family if you are not let to miss your visitation? Rahab didn't miss her visitation. No, she didn't. Oh, I tell you. When they come to spy out the land, somebody's got to hear this. The devil's telling you you're nothing. But in Jesus said, I say, to you, are something. You're yeah. something in God's eyes. You're something in Jesus' eyes. It don't matter what, it don't matter what pastor says. It's something in Jesus' eyes. You're something in his eyes. Here the spies went down there. But she hid them. You know what they said? She went up on the rooftop. I know you read the stories. They said, man, hell in the world's gone. She even told some lies. And the Lord watched her start looking. She told some lies. Said they went somewhere else and they, they were up on her rooftop. She knew where they was at. Yes. But buddy, when they went out, Thank God ain't got a plan. Yeah, yes. Here she goes up there and gets them. In other words, remember, we know that God's giving you this. We know that God's with you. Somewhere or another, she was paying attention. Yes. She was paying attention when God was visiting all the other places. Brother Jeff, she was paying attention. Amen. And she said, We know that God's with you. So I feel the Holy yes. Ghost. We know that God's with you. But God, you're going to take the land now. But I'm asking you just have mercy. Lord God, forgive me and my family. My mom, my dad, my siblings. Remember them when you come to take this city. Yes, sure did. Amen. Come on. They told her. She let her down. She was on the wall. She lived up on the wall. And she let him down after so many days that they was out trying to find them. They listened. They, even though they was, now listen to this. Even though they was spying out the, the land, they was men of God. But they listened to what Rahab the heart had said. Don't leave right now. Let them get well through there. There's so many days they'll be gone. And then you slip out and you go the other way. Yes. But when you come back in, they said, because you've been, in so many words, you've been kind. You showed us kindness. You didn't rat us out. You didn't tell the devil what God's going to do. When we come back to get the city, just put out a little red ribbon. 
Put out this wet. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. But God, I thought about the blood of Jesus. But God, the blood covers it. If you're just hanging out, God's got it all. Don't let no let the people pass you by the mouth. The Lord just put it through your heart. Zach just didn't let it happen. Rahab didn't let it happen. On down through. On down through. All this here, you can read it and start in Matthew. You can read it in the book of Luke, chapter 3, I believe it is. It talks about all this right here. Ruth, she got Boaz. There was one that was in front of Boaz, but this one that was in front of Boaz didn't want nothing to do with Ruth. Do we understand that? Didn't want nothing to do. But God, Boaz was next in line. But he went and done everything according to the way that they had done it back in those days. They had to pull a shoe off and hand it to him. But God, because of what the word said. And he pulled it off. I forget his name. But God, he pulled it off. I can't have Ruth. She's a Moabite. I can't have her. She ain't no Jew. She's not part of us. But buddy, not God's eyes. The seed, you know, the seed's going to come for about down through this right here. You may say what you want to say, but boy, God's got a plan that's bigger than you ever thought about, did you? Then we'll take and put limitations and cause. Limitations cause people to miss the dissertation of God. Oh, pray that my family gets saved. It was set as hard as a rock. Yes. Yeah. Preach it. You want to see him saved or not? Come on. God. Buddy, I'm after your family, same as mine. Yes. God put something to me, but the Lord said, I'm after your family, same as mine. Yes. Just because they ain't a spirit. That don't mean nothing to Jesus. The name spirit don't mean nothing to Jesus. But God, you've got to take on that family name. Yes. And when God says, hey, I'm going to call them this one. There ain't nothing old Larry Spirit can do about it. God called them out. God said, I'm going to do a work to live in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on. That's what caused people to miss their visitation. Sometimes you may just have to separate yourself from certain kinds. That's right. That's the truth. Till you can take and just get grown up enough that when they come around, yeah. you know the old saying, water runs off a duck's back? <laughs> That's right. That's what happens to me. Right. But I just hear that water is running. I'm talking about talking. Right. I hear them talking, it's just like water running. Uh -huh. Don't don't fatten me a bit. Bake them a cake. Right. Why? Because you've got to know who your God is. Yes. You've got to understand who He is. What he talks to, when he talks to you, he, I know we're hearing other voices, but he said, my sheep. Right. Yes. Come on. They know my voice. Yes. My voice. In a but but well, I hear a lot of voices, but they ain't Jesus. Right. Come on. Lord, he didn't say we weren't hearing no other voices. He said, my sheep know my voice. Yes. And a stranger they won't follow. Oh. What's that saying? When I hear something strange, I'm not going to listen to it. Hey, that's oh. not you, Jesus. Well, oh. if you're not real sure, if you don't know his voice like you should,
He'll speak to us in our vehicles. He'll speak to us on our jobs. He'll speak to us walk, me walking back through the mountains. Uh, he'll speak wherever you are, and you still won't do what he says. Come on. Because of what somebody else has said or say. Right. Yeah. Gotta get past it. Well, I have a skeleton right now. I'd say get that through back in there at the dead. Come on. Come on, church. Amen. When we come to Jesus, did he not wipe it out? Yeah. Brother Cecil says here something, probably something didn't like. In that cup, he would put keys and all that stuff in there. Right. Oh, a lot of us thought he was fixed to talk about the Holy Ghost. Yeah, Holy Ghost moves in. But do you know what else is in there? It's got to get out. Right. Come well, on. People don't like that. That's the reason people ain't full of the Holy Ghost. Come on. I'm talking about full of the Holy Ghost. Come on. But not full of it. Walking in the truth. Walking in the light. But about when you go to get all these other things out, you know what comes in? The Holy Ghost. Here comes some more Holy Ghost. Yes. Here comes some more Jesus. Jesus he first the kingdom of God and his righteousness yes. and all these other things yes. will be added up to you. Good. Well, a lot of it is. It ain't, it ain't even hardly touched on very much. Just a few of them. I'll tell you what's in the cup. A lot of them is said of human works of the flesh. Amen. 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 And buddy, it's right in the church. Definitely. It's right in the church. You Amen. believe that or not. Amen. Preach it. And we need, you know what we need instead of part of the seven human works of the flesh or any of the seven human works of the flesh? We need the nine spiritual gifts. Amen. You know what? Yeah, we get the Holy Ghost. Seek but that, that's just not it. You know what the Bible says? A lot of people don't like prophesying. Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. A lot of people don't even like prophesying. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says covet to prophesy. Amen. That's the word. Yes. Covet. Yes. Covet. Yes. Covet to prophesy. I know the Bible says prophecy is going to cease. It also says tongues is yes. too. Yes, everybody did. I still misquote some scriptures. Everybody does. That don't mean I ain't got the Holy Ghost. Right. That don't mean I ain't got the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They come off that about being a prophet. People prophesy. People's not guessing. I told you when the God puts it on me, I ain't a guessing. Right. You say what you want to say. You know what I say when God tells me? It's it's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. What God says is going to happen. Thus saith the word of God is going to happen. Yeah. It don't matter. You say, well, that didn't happen to me. Ain't what, nothing wrong with me. Well, you don't know what God was doing. Can you see on the inside of what your body is? God heals some of us. But God, we don't even know that he's doing it. Why? Because sometimes he has to do it. Because that's your eyes open up. Amen. Amen. Man, that's shocking tonight. Amen. Jesus. The Lord's it's time for people. Work together. There's some we need to come together so much. Yes, work together. Why are we fighting to devour one another in here? Yeah. And Jesus. most of you know what it is? And we got I got family that's lost on their way to hell. Me too, Lori. Going to hell. We need to work together. And here we're sitting here fighting over what right. we're gonna hang back about what somebody's wearing, what somebody looks like, what they smell like. Look, I'm Yes. Love will get somebody this over. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the genuine love. Yes. Blood loves each other. Sometimes you just get around hugging on your blood work. They're going to 
cry and go to altar anyway. Yeah. But I'm talking about the real, genuine love of Jesus. Amen. When they say, boy, he don't hate me or she don't hate me. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. Preach it. Guess what? Jesus is coming. Yes. And do you know what he's, the Bible says? His eyes go to and fro. Yes. Beholding the good and the evil. Throughout the whole land. And you know what he sees? He said he don't just see the good, or he don't just see the evil or the bad that we call it. It's the good and the evil. Yes. So if you think you're so good, but you're hindering this one from getting in, that's bad. That's bad. Yes. You gotta be righteous as Jesus was. He was holy. The Bible says, "Be you holy." I'm not being mean. I'm after souls. When I go on that mountain, Brother Bell, I'm after souls. Yes. You know what's tough? Breaking this. Yes. Breaking the wheel of the flesh. Amen. Get it under subjection. I've been telling people said it for years. Well, if you ain't born again, well, maybe you ain't. Right. What are you talking about? I've said this here for him to come to you. Mock me. When you you gotta break the will of the flesh. Amen. The flesh loves stuff. Uh -huh. It loves things. Yes. It's got a pride of life. Amen. You gotta break that. Yes. It's got a lustful eye. And you gotta break that. This is in the word of God. I'm not preaching something off the wall. The lust of the eye, the pride of life. Lord, it'll take us to it. It'll take us to hell. Amen. I don't care how much we get up here speaking tongues. I don't care how much we run the aisles. I don't care how faithful we are. Look, I don't, it don't matter how faithful we are coming to church. How faithful we are fasting. How faithful we are praying. How faithful we are going out to sing. How faithful we are to testify. It don't matter. But God, if you ain't got love, if you ain't got all this stuff conquered up, you will never make it to heaven. Amen. Don't let the visitation pass you by. Bless him, Lord. It's on that mountain today. Start back up at tuck that old pack again. The Lord began to talk to me. As I was going through a boat, the boat they was didn't mean to disrespect, but he's my brother. But in the pack, since the last time I was there, we've had some wind. And they was a, not very big, I could have stepped over it. But you know how flesh is used to take the easy route. Man, scripture just wouldn't come out of me. Here I went to the right, go go around that. And the Lord said, don't peer off the path. Don't look to your right hand. Don't look to your left. There's a lot of people that don't know the right from the left. There's a lot of people that they're not the left. The ones that know can stay on the path. And when you're staying on the path, you're showing some love. Yes. Look God, when you say, hey, what are you talking about, preacher? Look God, when you're staying on the path, you are go over to Peter and read it. You ain't forgot where you was purged from. Look God, you know that you was once there. You see, look God, how that they are, what they wear, what they look like, how they smell. It don't matter. Jesus is working on them. Amen. Yes, amen. I know I've preached it. That's why people's looking at me right now. Buddy, he's a backslider. Let me tell you something. I know what I feel in my soul. And I wouldn't trade it for the money for all the riches that's in this world. What I've got in my soul. What I've got spared than God. It's precious. Yes. Sister Pat is precious. Yeah, it is. Do we understand when the visitation comes how precious it is? It'll change your whole life. Yes, it will. And let me tell you something. When the Holy Ghost 
when it comes to you and telling you to move, that's where we got to move tonight. He wanted to move early. He wanted to move early. He wanted to move early. But some of us missed that visitation. But God, it ain't all the time. Once it's climbed up in that spiritual sycamore tree tonight, from here on out, when the Holy Ghost, when the Spirit talks to you, He may not say the exact words, but this is what He's saying. Make haste and come down. Yes. For this day, this day I must abide at your house. Zacchaeus didn't hesitate, Brother Ronnie. We got too much hesitation, and I know why it is. I talk to God on the mountain today. It's because of what's hindered that's going on in the yes. service. It's because of other people's what their eyes look like. It's because of what they want to take and put a foot up on them. Yes. You may say, well, I ain't put the foot on nobody. Look at it's how you look at them. It's what they wear. It's what they're doing. Look at it's time. Look at it's time. Look at And say, hey, they're going to get there one day. I see a finished product. Buddy, I had to. I'll be the first to say it. If you don't, God will humble you. And even that, it don't mean I'm backsliding, Brother Ronnie. When I told Jesus, Jesus, go on up, man. You know how many times I walk up first saying it? Jesus, I want to be just like you. Yeah. And here comes Scripture. What's the most time he's bringing to my mind? It's love. What he would do when he'd go into a place and he'd change the whole town. Yes, he did. He changed everything in there. He had them all. You know what people say? Man, you got a big crowd, you're doing something wrong. He had a crowd. I guess Jesus doing something wrong, wasn't he? No. No, sir. But he had 5,000 men talking. It wasn't counting the women and the children. Right. But he had something to give them. I said he had something to give them. Yes, he did. Even his disciples, hear me. Even his disciples want to send them away. Tell them to go into the market. He said, uh-uh. Right. Some of them may perish. Right. Right. If we keep pushing them away, they're going to perish. Right. Amen. Oh, oh, my you. you better get a hold, Lord God. Don't let the visitation pass you by. We're always looking at things, but what did Jesus say? You got any bread here? Yeah, there's a little lad over here. It ain't much, boy. What are you going to do with all this? Two fish, five loaves, five little barley loaves. That's all you need. Man, you look at all this crap, Lord. That's just, ain't that just like the devil? God's giving you a word, but he's right there huffing and puffing. Come on. He's there huffing and puffing. And Lord God, if you don't watch and you don't listen to the voice of God, do you know what will happen? The visitation will pass a lot by. Come on, preach it. The truth. Jesus didn't pay no attention to that. No, he didn't. What's that so many amongst this crowd here? He just went to tell them, hey, go around and tell them, sit down in 50s and hundreds. In so many words, I'm fixing to show you something here. Yes. If you'll just listen. God's fixing to show you something yes. if you'll just listen. Mighty God. If you'll listen to what he says, he's fixing to show you something. Mighty it don't matter for God how it may look, the outcome what it looks like. It didn't look too good. It didn't look too good for Jesus. Could you imagine? Oh, thank you. Could you imagine going through the crowd? Come on. This is one time doubt didn't, didn't even bother Jesus. I know sometimes doubt will do with that. But this is one time that he wasn't going to bother Jesus. He had, to, he had to show him something. How many times have we doubt it? He still shows us. Yeah. Sure we doubt he still shows us. Sure does. I don't know how it's going to happen. He, he just shows up. I'll show you how to happen. They got sent down there, Brother Ronnie. Here it was 5,000 men. What not counting the women and children. I always thought about it. If, if each man had a wife, there's 10,000. Yeah. And each couple had a child, there's 15. So there was anywhere from 15 to 20,000 people there. Easily. Yeah. Easily. Most kids, they, most couples probably had a couple. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, back then. There was at least 15 or 20,000 people there. And Lord, what's this going to be? Hey, hey, don't you just realize we text it? Well, he said $5,000. He said, no, it ain't what the Bible says. No. I, well, no, you can get in the Bible and read what you want to read. He said more than 5000 Yes. Yeah, sure did. Sure did. So he just looked up. He's getting to get back. Look, said, now, could you imagine that? Now, just go to the Start giving it to them. And when they got done, all of them would eat. He said, now take it up. Take up the fragments that's left. What did they bring? Twelve, twelve basketfuls. Basket they didn't say twelve baskets. Twelve baskets full. Yes. Could you imagine that? They want nobody, Brother Ronnie, after the people saw. They want nobody going to deter the mind of the ones that stood and said, Lord, what's this amongst so many? They want nobody going to deter their mind. Lord God, when Jesus got through, when your visitation comes, if you'll get a hold of the and nails going to hands of Jesus, there's nobody going to deter your mind. That's right. Get you off from that. In this yard, I'm just going to tell you, they're sitting right back there. <laughs> Buddy, I prayed, sought, and talked to God because He was changing me about this love thing. I've been mean, on understood what I was talking about that night. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men into me. You hear a lot of things, Brother Jeff, and a lot of times it tries to make it just put you, tries to put you down. Uh huh. It does get you down sometimes. And it'll just pound on you for a long time. But you know what I've learned through all this? I don't put my trust in man. Okay. And I, it's been said here since 2018 that I came here. And it's probably said there before, before that too. It's probably preached sure you can't trust man. Because you can't trust man. No. Man's going to fail us. Right. But in this right here, when everybody says you're backing up, you're doing this, you're just fitting in, you're just going along with the crowd. Jesus said, just keep on loving. Every time I go on that mountain, just keep on loving. Uh, keep on preaching the love. Uh, then at night, you don't have I had to obey God. Just listen to what he said. And in that, he taught me that I'm on the right path. Right. It don't matter what the world says. When they came, it wasn't me, but because I've been praying and seeking and asking God. Lord, i got to know that I'm on the right path. Yeah. Right. Because when I felt that in the spirit, it didn't take. Lord, I'm trying to beat and pound and beat on somebody to get here. Just lift up Jesus. Lift up Just me. lift up Jesus. Just lift up yes. Jesus. And they'll come. He yes. said, if I be lifted up, I'll fall off. That's all it takes. Lift him up. But in that people, look, when we're trying to lift him up, do we understand when we're praising, when we're when we're saying hallelujah, when we're singing, when we're testifying, we're lifting up the name of Jesus. Yes. Why can't we build the kingdom instead of tear down the kingdom? Wow. Let's start tearing down Satan's kingdom. You ever hear that song, Satan? Your kingdom's coming down? Yes. Why can't we tear his kingdom down instead of trying to tear each other down? Yes. It's going to take something. We say it all the time. We live in a wicked, wicked world. And it's going to take something, Sister Dory, to get a hold of people. Back when I come back to the Lord, Brother Bo, in 2005, now think about it. It's been almost 16 years ago. I thought the world was bad then, and it was. Mm -hmm. But what a, compare it to 2021. We're fighting, and, and go on back. Go back to when we used mom and dad. Go back to when they came to Jesus. They didn't have, I know they fit spirits. They didn't have to fight the spirits that people fit in the 80s. This was in the 70s for me. They didn't have to fight what was going on in the 90s back then. 
Right. Do you understand? Satan is going to be releasing more and more. Do you know why? Because he knows that it's just about over for him. Right. He knows that it's just about over. And he's going to do everything in his power to keep your family bound. And if he can keep them down long enough, then he's going to kill them. And if he can kill them before they get to Jesus, he's got another one that's in hell. So why do we fight and argue and bicker amongst each other when their families are on their way to hell? Amen. Come on. And they're this and their visitation. Yes. It ain't the God changed? God ain't never changed. Well, yeah, boy. Do you know what? Let's use blind Bartimaeus. Right before this, here was a visitation coming. You got to get this. Because this is happening right in church today. I know what I'm preaching about. I talk to Jesus. I'm nothing without Jesus, but when he reveals things, when he lets you know things, it's time to address the things that's happening in the house of God. Amen. It's time, but God, that we need to learn. I'm talking you want to say you've grown up, you're mature, but God, if you can't help a little one, you ain't too grown up. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know what? My nature's always been with kids. Kids don't know no better. No. They say sometimes when you get in, in, in fear of somebody's going to get hurt, it's like you're stronger for some odd reason. I don't know. But I remember a time up, up Ranger. In fact, you may have been there. I was having a ball game. I was out there. And my brother Clifford, his little boy Nathaniel, he didn't know no different, but he loved trains. And we was next to a train track. He loved trains. He wasn't probably... Three or four years old, about like his car, Mike, and maybe a little younger. And when we was there, when that train started down through there, they got to looking where Nathaniel was at. Because he just took off. It was he wanted that train. But that was instinct that kicked in on me. He was probably halfway further, closer to the train than me. But Brother Bo, that was an instinct that kicked in that he's going to lose his life. And I ran. They said they never seen nobody run. They stopped me, but I ran as hard as I could run to capture this child. Because I knew he was in danger. Yes. That's the way we should be when somebody gives their life to Jesus. Exactly. We should do everything in our power to not let no harm come to them. It don't matter the things that they like. We got to show them love. I didn't go over and grab him and say, hey, you can't get around that train. What's the matter with you, boy? They got to kick it on him. God. I grabbed him and I loved him because the fastest I was coming, I swept him off the ground. It scared him. But I let him know. I didn't go to screaming at him. I just sat there and talked to him. I said, look, that train. I said, Nathaniel, I said, it'll hurt you. I said, you'll be gone, buddy. I said, don't ever go towards your train. We need to be that way towards your children. Right. Our children in the church. I talk about the young ones. Right. We didn't know how. We didn't know how to handle them. If they're not where you at, why can't you help them to get there? Right. This look here, I hope, I hope you get this. Church, I hope we get this. I'm including me. Lord, teach me. Teach me. Jesus, Jesus. teach me. But here was Blind Barnabas. We're gonna get this here. We're gonna try to be close here shortly. Here's Blind Barnabas. He heard. He had to hear about Jesus somewhere. He heard about Jesus. He had to. He didn't see. He was blind. He heard of that. But he sat by the wayside. He was. He would beg. And when he was sitting there one day, he heard this commotion. He could hear. You know they say, if you lose one sense, your other will pick up or kick in. I don't know how true it is, but they say that. I mean, he could hear way better than what he could. I know he could see, but he heard this commotion. So he asked him, what's going on? 
He'd never heard about Jesus. What's going on here? What's all this sound? What's all this shouting and the commotion that I'm hearing? This is when Jesus was heading to Jericho. Yes, Jesus. Was Jesus passing by? Boy, when he heard about Jesus, he's passing by. You know what Zacchaeus done? I mean, do you know what Brian Bartimaeus done? Started he started out. crying out. Yes. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. But here was one up right over. Hey, hold your peace. Hold your peace. Don't you be crying out to serve Jesus. Uh-huh. You ain't nothing. You're blind. You don't know what you're talking about. Not him. Not one of our No. That's what I'm telling you here tonight. All of that much more. Go where that God get that spirit. Get that spirit that he had that was hungry. He said, I gotta see my son. I gotta get my eyes open. I heard he can do it. I heard this about this Jesus. I, I know he can heal me. I know he can open my eyes. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Or he just dropped this in me. I know I've said it before. They was identified by a coat. You believe that? There was something of their garment identified in Brother Jeff that they was blind. But you know what? Jesus stopped. Yes. He got his attention. Bring him to me. I always thought about this. It's just something that impressed me. Him being blind. Let's try to get him to hold the peace, but he just kept a scream. Yes. Got Jesus' attention. Jesus stopped and bring him to me. Yes. Do you know what happened next? They said, He calls for thee. Yes, they went, Are you sure it was him? Jesus. Not blind Bartimaeus. <laughs> he went to jerking his garment off. He left his garment. Lord God, I don't think nobody had Brother Bo to take a lead. Why? Because Jesus called for you. Jesus is calling for you. Don't miss your visitation. Don't miss it of what Jesus is doing for you. Amen. He threw that garment off and he went to Jesus. Jesus asked him. Jesus calls for us. And when you ask us something, sometimes we're too afraid because of what somebody else says. Uh-huh. Not me. I pay no attention to him. Well, what can I do for you? See, Jesus said, come over. What are you doing screaming, boy? No, he didn't. That wasn't Jesus' attitude. Uh-uh. He said, what can I do for you? He said, that I might receive my sight. There's a lot. Get on the spiritual way. We always look at the natural stuff. I know God can heal these natural eyes. I need to heal on mine. Okay? But I'm talking about getting in the spirit. A lot of times when we're in the spirit, we need to get in the spirit. Right. We got lost that's blind right now. Do you understand that? Blind. Yeah. One day we'll sing that song. One day I was sitting by the wayside of Aiken. Just like a blind barn. I was blind. But Jesus came by the way. We believe he opened her eyes, but he can't open nobody else's. Mm. We believe he opened her eyes for the Lord, but Lord God, for some odd reason, we think that he can't open somebody else's eyes. He can open them. The visitation comes, instead of us getting in praise the Lord, they're going to get their eyes open tonight. I'm going to praise you. I can feel the Holy Ghost. I'm going to keep on praising them. It does not matter what they look like. It does not matter what they look like.
there talking to him. I was just shaving, getting ready. But he, I just come off the mountain. I said, I gotta get ready. Then I was just shaving and talking to him. You know what he brought to me, Brother Jeff? He brought to me about Jonah. When God told him to go to Nineveh and preach to them people. A lot of times God comes to and preach. We won't because of what's happening or what's sitting in the service. Uh-huh. Well, I've learned it don't matter what's sitting in the service. Preach anyway. We gotta preach anyway. Because so if we don't, we're gonna get in trouble with God. But what Lord was taking to on this, when John had learned his lesson, Take it very long. he got down there, you get in the bell of hell, you'll learn a lesson. Yes. The bell of hell, he said, cried out. Yes. I'll do it, Lord. Just send me. Lord, let me hear it one yes. more time. You know what happened? God Almighty spoke to that big whale. That great fish is a whale. He spoke to that and said, it's time to vomit him up. You know what happened, old Jonah? Man, could you imagine that all that seaweed? Everything that... I believe God caused that old fish to get sick. Yes. Here it come. Boy, I gotta puke. I know you gotta get the spirit. Yes. But you know what happened when that vomit came up on the, the land? He didn't waste no time. The Bible says the voice of the Lord came to John again. Yes. He did not waste no time. No, he didn't. But he here he was again. <laughs> and when he got in that city, I'm fixing to get to a point. When he got in that city and he was instructing them, do you know what happened? Oh, Jonah didn't like it at the end. He didn't like what happened. That's just like people today. They don't like it when God changed the situation. God told him first, said, go down and preach to the people that don't know the right hand from the left. Do you understand? That's a lot my family, your family, everybody else's family that don't know the right hand from the left. They don't know the right way. But you know what happened? There was a king in that town. There was a king in that city. And sometimes, you know what it takes? It didn't matter that king or any of the people said. Right. He proclaimed the fast. Yes. Not just for him, but it's for everybody. Children, animals, everybody. We got to get turned around. God's fixing to destroy this place. Oh, it might have been tough on the flesh. That's what the Lord's talking to me about today. It might be tough on the flesh. But if you can take and overcome that flesh, if you can take and overcome in that battle, do you know what comes after the battle? Victory comes after the battle. If you're learning by God to do exactly what you're told, he's my king. Jesus is my king. I'm not worried about nobody else. If he says to do it, I'm going to do it. Don't let this visitation pass you by. There's too much stuff going on. And it's hindering the growth yes. of the children of God. Amen. Jonah, because of his obedience at the end, turned around a whole city. If we'll learn to be obedient when our visitation comes, that's how merciful God was. We may not, have, we may not get that second chance like John. Right. John was crazy enough. Think of this, him running from the presence of God. He was crazy enough. So just throw me overboard, boys. And all your troubles will go away. In other words, he was wanting to commit suicide. He wasn't. I, he wasn't just in a little river somewhere. He was running short. from the Lord. He was out in the sea. He was out in the deep. And you know what happened here? An old sleeper was down there. lot just sleeping in the church. Lord, glory to God. <laughs> They're sleeping in the church. Yes. You know what I pray that the Holy Ghost comes to and visit you tonight yes. and say, "Get up, old sleeper. Yes. Get up, old sleeper. It's time to call on your God." Every service, you know what should be? A lively service to you. Yes. Should become expected. 
And look at look at this one. Do you know how many promises I've had people coming? Lord. But you know what happens sometimes? If it, if it don't happen the way we think, I knew it. They're coming. Why don't you just keep praising and say, Lord, they're coming. They're coming. The devil's got a stronghold, but they're coming. They're coming. coming. Oh, God doesn't have to break out the stronghold. Off our family. And Lord God, he's got anointing. If the anointing, not just when we're preaching. Do you know I'm anointed at the house? Amen. You're anointed at the house. Yes. Same as you are, God got at the church house. Yes. Amen. His anointing don't leave me. After the battle, victory does. Victory. You know what sometimes we need to do? They know, I know the Bible says do it in secret. You know what sometimes we need to do? And I'm not the king. Get that out of your head. I ain't the king. Jesus is the king. <laughs> Buddy, if, if the Lord puts it on me, and we'll say we're going to fast. For a day or two, we need to fast. We shouldn't make excuses and say, I can't. I can't. I can't. If that would be any of said, I can't get out, it would be in trouble. Yes, they had to. What do you think about the kids? They still wait. Child abuse. <laughs> Don't you think God can give them exactly? How big do you think God is? He created the milk. Yes. So why can't he just put it in them? God can give us in the flesh. We don't even have to intake it. He can give us in the flesh to keep us. You can believe that if you want to. I know a lot of people say, man, you say some stuff off the wall. You need to get a little common sense. But well, that's all right. I know what my God can do. Yes. He created this body. I know he can put food in it when I ain't even eating with my mouth. Right. They can Amen. make it all hungry. Amen. How do you think you get Moses? How do you think you get Moses? It wasn't just 40 days. Yeah. Moses, when he came down, he went right back up. There was another 40. He was 80 days. You've got to study the script. It wasn't just 40 days. He was 80 days. No food, no water. Who do you think kept Moses? The scientists and everything says, doctors will say you'll die. But not if you're doing it according to the word of God. You won't die. But that's the problem. Break the wheel of that flesh and you'll see God move. I mean, Sister Jamie was talking about Lord deal with me on it. Probably her too. She was talking about this. Seems like every time that God wants you to do something, you know what's there? Yeah. The enemy ain't going to let you take it. Oh, man. Flesh. You're going to smell food? Huh? That's time it's going to roll. But it hurts. <laughs> okay, what anybody says? You smell you some good fried chicken. Mm -hmm. That stomach, if you ain't eating a day or two, it's going to start rolling. Like you understand fire. that? But if you're taking, get it under subjection. Yes. Then when we come in this place, a lot of stuff needs to get under subjection. Then people will not miss their visitation. Amen. When they're in a place like this, Sister Dory, you know what happened? I'm looking forward to it. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm looking forward to your family. Same as my family. Sister Carol, your daughter's coming. It don't matter what the devil says. He's pushing your mind. You say, well, you just saying it. No, I ain't just saying it. I know what the Lord, Lord God, what the Spirit says. If we'll be obedient to Him, if we'll seek His face, Lord God, they're coming, Sister Pam. Lord God, I'm going to speak life into it. Speak life into it. Say, don't look and say, you'll never make it. They're going to make it in Jesus' name. I know that it may look what, what Van calls impossible. That's that's been it's just handed down from 
generation, years. You know why? It's what we've let down and let creep in. Uh -huh. Years ago, it didn't matter. It didn't matter to people of what somebody looked like when they come to the house of God. Right. There's where the Lord's taking me back to. What did I look like? Right. Take for instance, take for instance this right here. What people do in their sin is sin. And this old boy right here didn't make me saved. I've said this probably hundreds of times. It didn't make me saved. But I was raised in the Jesus name faith according to the word. And I was raised that way. But that did not make me saved. Because I knew who Jesus was did not make me saved. But there was a love one day that got a hold of me. The love that got a hold of me. And it changed who I was. Even though a lot of people come in, they may look one off the wall strange. But guess what? They may not have been raised like old brother Larry was raised. They may not have been raised like you was raised. A lot of people haven't. They don't know. They don't understand. They've never even heard about Jesus. So why is it when they come in we could be sitting there like this. I'm, I'm being real with you. We could be sitting there like this, Brother Bo, just maybe before church and even talking to somebody before service ever takes up. Some strange come in, or I guess, you know, you can see so far here, I can see. Even though I'm looking over this way and I can see the angel, but you can see over this way. I can still see Brother Bo sitting right there. But if something catches your eye, do you know what we do? Did you see that? And if they see that, do you know what happens? They don't want to come back. Right. You know why? They're looking for love. They've been beat down. They've been stomped on. They've been trampled. That's all they've been through. Uh -huh. And that's why in the service, then you'll sit there the whole service, hardcore, staring them down. Yes. Not Just staring at them. They're like, is there something on my face? Did I do something wrong? And you won't stop instead of you praising. Right. If you praise, do you know what'll happen? They say, man, I'm gonna take them. Right. There ain't nobody looking at me, boys. I feel something in this place. Yeah. Yeah. I feel something I, that I have never felt out of that world. Right. The world, look here, the drug addicts. They're addicted. They're hearing out there every time that they come in here. They don't need to hear that. They know what they are. Do you know what they need to hear? That Jesus loves them. They need to hear that Jesus died for them. They need to hear. They don't need to hear Lord God about somebody that's been strung out on dope and preach a half a night on. This is what God's preaching me at. Lord God, yeah, I understand we don't do that stuff. But when that atmosphere comes in the house, we better learn to show love. Love that's going to get them in here. Love will get them to there. And all at the same time, this is this is tough. It's good. But all at the same time, you know what I've got to do? Because the Lord's teaching me, the ones that's doing the hard looks, I gotta love them the same. I can't say, man, I'm so mad at them. My family came, and they sat there and just started them down and didn't show them no love or nothing. You know what it is? That's a hate building me. Right. Church, we got to get this right. Yes. This is why when we're working against each other, it don't work. Uh, it don't work. Miserable. It'll never work with both against each other constantly. Well, it's this way. You know whose way it is? Right here. It's Jesus' way. 
If it ain't my way, he's taught me that. And I'm still learning. It's his way. So however God wants to do in his service, why do we think it's strange? I'll tell you why. And I'm just about through. I'll tell you why. It's man's tradition. And I can take you to the word of God. This, You know what men's tradition do? It makes God's word of none effect. In other words, when your traditions are set in the house of God, it causes people to miss their visitation. Well, glory. It causes people to miss their visitation. Jesus, he's all love. He's ever been of that. And I know he's got all power, but look at it this way. It's hard enough. It's hard enough to get people here when you're showing them all the love. You know how you got your arm around them, spiritual arm, get in the spirit, please. You get your arm around them in the spirit. You got them here. You're talking to them. You're showing them all the love you know how to show. Do you know all it takes is one harsh word and you've killed every bit of it. That's all it takes. You get them here, and you know what they'll say? They'll get up. Boys, I thought they loved me. I thought they was loved there. You can't love one service because it's yours. And somebody else has come in, and there's hate. Love and hate don't dwell in the same place. Can't, it cannot dwell there. Do you know what to do? The Bible teaches this. Salt water, bitter water, sweet water cannot flow out the same town. Can't do it. You say, wait, well, I'm telling you right now, I can't do it. You can't show love one night and hate somebody the next night. There's something that's not right. You know what I do? I get on my knees and I cry out to Jesus. You say, well, what about then? Gotta be like Jesus. You can't always look and say they don't men doing back. That is the Old Testament. That is the Old Testament. We don't do away with it. I ain't what I'm saying. It ain't eye for an eye, tooth for tooth no more. It's over with. Right. Jesus said, "Love the enemy. Yeah. Be good to those that despitefully use you. Yeah. The enemy's hungry, feed them. Well, that's tough. This the love." You know what I always thought, man, him love me. She said nothing. Get up like that and you preach him, boy, you're tiring him up. You, ain't talk, you know what tires him up? Worse than any is a love message. Love will tire them up. It'll take and bust that stony heart up every time. It'll get them to this all. Don't let your visitation pass you by. Zacchaeus, salvation. You know what come to you? This day I must abide at your house. Salvation come to your house. What is salvation? It's deliverance. When that love is there, Brother Ronnie, he ain't talking about a house like this. You know what we're going to do? And I know, Lord God, we need to respect this building. I understand that. But I'm talking about glory to God. This is the house Jesus is talking about. Salvation has come to this house. Don't let nobody stop that. Nobody. All the young, don't let nobody stop. What God's telling you to do, don't you let nobody stop. If you want to come and tell somebody, tell Jesus. If you need somebody to talk to, you can come talk to me. Lord, put me here not to take and talk about people. God put me here to help people. That's why he put me here. You can call the pastor. If you've got a situation, you can call the pastor. If I don't know how to answer, I'll say, hey, i got to pray. I gotta read, I gotta talk to God. Cause some of them, I may not be able to answer. I ain't gonna tell you I can answer all right, I ain't God. But Lord to God, if I start seeking, He'll give me an answer. If we're sincere, He'll give me an answer to give to you. It may take me a few days or a week, but I'll get you an answer. You say, you know God that much? Yeah, I'll talk to him. But if you get down sincere with God, He'll give you an answer. So don't let this moment 
Don't let this visitation pass you by. Every one of us in this place here tonight, we should look at each other. It's been said here. Lord just keeps bringing it back stuff back to my mind right now. I could ask any of you and you'd say, there's no way I'd do it. Would you hurt your own self? Would you literally hurt your own flesh? Unless you're demon possessed, that's the only way you can do it. But guess what? We're one body. Oh, I love Jesus. We're one body. If we're one body, they have two hands, two feet. One can't say this, I don't need you. One can't say to the foot, I don't need you, or I don't need your toes. You know what toes is? It's balance. Without feet, you can't walk. Without hands, it'd be hard to eat. You can eat, but it's hard to eat. Without eyes, you can't see. So why do we look around and say, I don't need you? That could be an eyeball. That could be a watchman out there for you. Why do we tell the mouth we don't need the mouth? We need the mouth. We need the ear. Amen. We need the eyes. We need the nose. We need all of it. And there's some parts that's inside here we don't even see. A lot of those is the parts that's getting hurt. Yes, it is. Can't see them. In the spirit, you can't even see them. But they ain't doing it my way. I'm going to get them this time. It ain't about my way. It's about Jesus' way. I'm still preaching about a visitation. And people... But the really the visitation is passing by. Service after service. Been here going on three years now. This September will be three years. When somebody comes in this place, I've often thought about Willie Branch. You know why sometimes people want to come to Willie Branch? As new as this they come in the doors, they'd be saved. At one time in the 90s, they were scared to come through the doors. Now I ain't saying it like that way now, but I'm just saying if we will get so close to God, you know what happens? We get them through them doors. I was witness to some other day. I was witness to another day. I said, if I can just get you in the presence of God. I said, you've got a good heart. No matter if they do lie, cheat, and steal, and cuss. I said, buddy, you've got a good heart. I told him, but you, I said, you got a good heart. I can see your heart. I said, but if I can get you in the presence of God, I said, then you'll be born again. They said, yeah, how do you know i got a good heart? I said, the Holy Ghost. Well, God, you've got a witness. It don't matter. I've got that lows. I said, the Holy Ghost. Uh, they're going to feel all things. Uh, he'll bring it all to us, Lord God. And they've got a good heart. But I said, if I can get you in the presence of God in one of these services, I said, the Holy Ghost can get a hold of you. I said, that's why he said, you're right. Look right at me and said, you're right. That's why they won't come. They get in the presence of God. They'll give their life to him. That's how much of a hope the devil's got on them. Don't want them to come to church. Now, if he can keep them out another month or two, another month or two, he's got a chance to kill them. We'll fight. Now, I'll go ahead and say this here. When this day here comes, you know what that is? That's Easter. It's Sunday. When that day comes, we're having service. I got some I've talked to, buddy, I've been working on for a long time. If they do show up, any ignorance, any ignorance, I'm a coming to you. When I say ignorance, you better be grown up. You better be mature. You better treat them just like they just got born. Lost. I don't care if they're lost. You better say that nurse fixing to get born. It's in, it's been in the womb for nine months. I've been a working. I don't know if it's been nine months, but I've been a working on that. Look, God, I want to see them burst. And if we, Lord God, if we kill them just the instant they be born into the world, what's the matter with us? Amen. Amen. That's good. Things that go on, you know what we need? Some wisdom of God. Yes. Amen. Some wisdom of God. 
and he's a teaching me. And I'll continue to tell you, I'm not backing up. I'll tell you just like I used to tell you when I preached that what people call hardcore stuff. I know what hardcore is, it's love. I said, man, he's a hardcore preacher. I'm still hardcore, if that's why you want to look at it, come and live with me. I'm still the same one. But I haven't forgotten where God purged me from. I have not forgot it. I ain't going to forget it. I ain't going to forget it, brother buddy. But all at the same time, I'm going to look out these eyes with Jesus' eyes. I'm going to look, brother Mars, when I see him. I say, man, you got to look and say, I can't say it this way, but in so many words, that could be a preacher. That could be a prophet. That could be the one that delivers my child. That could be the one that gets my family saved. Instead of, well, man, if we get them down and listen to that. Why well, don't just get them here and just pay your testimony? God's anointing. It's the word. It's the norm. They hear it. And something pricks that heart. Get them there. Then it's going to be up to me. i got a big responsibility right now. I'm not complaining about it, but I just got a little bit wiser. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, no matter what it takes, what you've placed in my hands, I'm going to take care of. I'm not going to compromise to take care of them, but I'm going to take care of it. Compromise, you get in trouble. They ask, I'll tell them the truth. That's, that's when your biggest opportunity is when God's dealing with them all, they're going to come and ask somebody. Don't be off the wall with them and say, no, you don't do that now. Tell them the truth. If you don't got the right answer, they have us pray about it. God's tired of that friendly fire stuff. It's going on right in the church house. It's going on right in the church house. Well, I got them tonight. You didn't get nothing except for a mess. Then we've got to come back through and clean it up. Clean it up. I'm looking. Look here. God's going to do the cleaning up. Not me. God's going to do the cleaning up. I'll live the light. I'll be the light. They'll get their visitation. You believe that? If we live the light and be the light, they're going to get their visitation. Whether it's, whether it's at their house. They say, man, I've got to get saved. They can't take it no more. This is the most important part right here. See this? He said, the words that I speak, they're spirit and life. Amen. This is your visitation when it comes your way. When the spirit bids you, you better come. You better come. We're going to give it all a call right now. You ain't got no promise of tomorrow. If you need to get things fixed up, this goes for young, old, middle age, whoever you may be. If you need, if God's working with you on something, why not just step out? And I've said this here and I'll continue to stand on it. If people look, just use me for example. Use me for, but if I come and say, Brother Bo's preaching or dad or Jeff, and they're not preaching, my heart gets pricked. Because I come and kneel down and pray in a situation. We shouldn't look and wonder what they've done. Right. Oh my God, they've sinned today. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know what they're facing. That's the stuff that I'm talking about that's going on in the church. And people then, if, if do you understand the Holy Ghost? We have discernment. And if somebody feels that, you ever feel somebody before? What about you? I've felt somebody before. Just felt. Felt on the plums of their soul. And buddy, if they feel that, you, if we can feel that, if they can feel the hate or how you, I hear sometimes, you can say what you want to. Under the anointing, I hear people just voices talking back, but I know the voice of God. I've had people say, you're crazy. No, I'm tired of that voice saying you're crazy. I'm not crazy, okay? Jesus 
heard people's thoughts. He knew their thoughts. Amen. So if we got Jesus, which is the Holy Ghost, on the inside of us, so don't look and tell me because I know what I got. And I'm not being boastful with it. I know what I got. So don't look and say, no, you ain't hearing that. That's the whole problem in the church. People say you're not hearing that. I can't look at you and say you're not hearing that, Sister Dorothy. God speaks to you and says you're going to do this. I can't look at you and say God didn't tell you that. That's the wrong spirit. If God said it, get behind and say, Glory to God. God said it, I'm going to be right there with you. I'm going to rejoice. So this altar, it's always open. And I'm asking you tonight, if you're lost, saved, need a closer walk with Jesus, want to get more full of the Holy Ghost than what you was last service, this is real church. You want to get just a little bit more in you? Don't forget about the demonstration. It don't matter what anybody says. You want to get just a little bit more in you? The Bible says they were all filled. Not partially filled. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Why do you think they got so quick? Because back in them days, they come and sought. They was on the altar. Then they got filled. They was fully submerged. They was baptized in the Holy Ghost. So if you're lost in your night, you need Jesus, I've come. If you want to get received the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues, I will come. That's what, just talk to him, say, Jesus, I know you, look here, I know people talk, they're, they're talking to him during the day. They're talking to God. They're reading his word. Do you understand when you're talking and you're reading God's word, you're putting Jesus on the inside of you? Do you understand that's why that it stirs people up? That, glory God, they get a more hunger, they get a more of a thirst because they're so hungry. Jesus said, Lord God, if you hunger and thirst after righteous, he said, you shall be filled. Why did he say all this? He knew you was going to face these battles. Every one of us. Now, people can say what they want to. But I'm like this. I ain't going to try, I ain't going to do no tests like this because I don't want to get like that. But I'll guarantee you, in your walk with God, there's times we get a little cold. People say what you want to. At times, you'll get a little cold. You know what it is? You may be walking through a battle. Maybe you slacked on praying a little bit than what you normally do. You slacked on reading. Do you understand if you're not feeding the spirit man? Do you know what happens? He gets weak. Go without me. Yeah, he ain't taking Jesus. He said, don't even go there. He's going to take it the wrong way. That's sad. But you know, if you don't feed the spirit man, he gets weak. I'm going to tell you, we'll feed everything else except the spirit man. And Josh is done it, that little job. If you're not meditating, listen to some, uh, uh, I'll say we listen to bad stuff, but if you're not taking a listen to preaching, something, we can take a listen to that throughout the day. At the end of the day, we're so joyful, so happy. The devil can't do nothing with us. But there's other days that if you're not listening to it, you're just talking, having a normal conversation. Sometimes before the end of the day, so you may be in an argument. Oh, glory. But it don't mean we ain't got the Holy Ghost. It's because, do you understand the more we feed, the more we feed, how do you feed it? Why do you got to feed Jesus and Him in it? I was hungry. You fed me not. I was thirsty and you gave me no bread. We can use it a lot of different ways. This is needed right here tonight. This is needed. People sweating the visitation passing by. This is needed more and more and more. Every service. And look, church, we're we're fixing to, we're fixing to go into revival next month. We're fixing to go into revival for eight nights. So what I'm trying to get is get us even more ready before revival gets here. Our family can come and get saved before we're 
but revival, we should be revived before revival gets here. Shouldn't it take revival most time? And some of us it does, it, it happens that way. We'll take it, it takes six, seven nights. And then right when you get revived, you come to off the seat and you're jumping up and down, speaking in tongues, running the aisles, and then the last night you say, Man, I wish we could go on. Where was you at before it ever started? What was they at? The visitation passed them by. You don't want to look here, take this, please take this home with you tonight. Not because it's me preaching it. The book of the Lord spoke at me going that old hall road for other duties. Lord, I because I talked to him got up this morning. Yesterday evening, I was talking, hadn't found it yet, Brother Bo. Hadn't got there. A lot of people said, well, you're crazy. No, I got the word in me. I can get up and just start quoting scriptures. The Holy Ghost will move upon me. That's how God does. We're called, we're anointed to preach. But I said, Lord, I need a word. I need something from you for the people. Something that's so important that's going to matter. And that's when he began to talk to him about the visitation, about Zacchaeus. Get time up in that tree. Don't let nobody stop you. Get time up in it. People's been little too long enough. Zacchaeus was a little statue. He was a little short man. There's so many people around him. He couldn't see Jesus. But he said, I'm going to climb up in a sycamore tree. Jesus is coming. I don't want my visitation to pass me by. Buddy, when you get like that with Jesus, no matter how big the crowd is, because he can hear you, he'll walk right to your sycamore tree and look right up, and he'll say, hey, Ronnie, come out of that sycamore tree. Oh, Lord God. He'll say, Amber, come out of that sycamore tree. Lord God, you better hear it tonight. He'll say, Rudy, come out of that sycamore tree. That's how Jesus is. Don't let the visitation pass you by. It don't happen that way, they say. Or Jesus said. Man says it's impossible. But with me, all things are possible. If they say you can't, I'm saying you can. You got another word. I can do all things. Or, do, or does the scripture say I can do part of things? All. He said we can do all that. All. Through Christ, Jesus. which what? Strengthens me. So you can do it. That's why I'm going to encourage people. You can do it. Every one of you in here, you can do it. Why will friends say you can't? If, I always, if I'm always standing up here telling you you can't do nothing, you ain't never going to make nothing for yourself. What kind of church would I have? Before I knew it, you know what I mean? That one or two. And they was only coming because of his family, they love him. <laughs> True. Amen. Amen. But if you take, keep, see this? This ain't no blood. This is a sword that prunes, it cuts and heals at the same time. That's what that does. How many times this prune cut me? A lot. A lot. But when he done it, that could have been part of my visitation. Right. Actually, thank you, Jesus. That was my visitation. He didn't say part. He said that was your visitation. But I love you, church. And we're going somewhere. We're going somewhere with Jesus. You may you gotta look, you gotta look further than what this mind can think, or what the situation looks like. How bad things look five months ago with you all. What's it look like now? You gotta look past that. Yes. Got to keep pushing. Got to keep right on going. No matter how hard it gets. Lord, just, man, I was in the shade. There's victory after the battle. There's victory after the battle. So if you're doing something for Jesus and the devil don't like it, 
The body of the flesh don't like it. Do you know what's coming? Victory's coming. Victory's coming. Victory is coming. It don't matter, brother Ronnie, it's coming. The devil says you ain't gonna get it. It's there. Remember that. Jesus said, you know what he said? He said, I'll never leave you to forsake. Right. Okay? But I'll go with you always, even to the end of the world. It's all right. <laughs> Jesus is teaching me. I know I've said some things, made statements, but he ain't afraid to say when I'm wrong. If you've been around me long enough, you'll find it out. My wife's told me sometimes, I know I'm through. My wife's told me sometimes to quit embarrassing myself. I said, I can't help. And hold this till God has got to do it. <laughs> you just got to do it. No matter what. You know what I'm saying? That against my wife. And she said, man, if you just, I can't help. And hold this says, get up and do it. I haven't had to get up and confess and say I'm sorry and do all kinds of stuff. But you know why? That's where I'm at today. The Lord's seen a product, a product that he could work on and get finished. Right. I ain't saying I finished it, but he's working on it. Yeah. And I'm going to get there. You hear that little song? He's still working on me. He's still working on me. Tuck him just walk. Tuck him just a week to make the room and the Tuck him just a week. Not even a week. Six days. Or five days, however much. And he's been all this time. He's still working on me. He's still working on me. Think about that. He made the moon, the sun, the stars, the earth, all the trees. Look how many trees is out there. Here is just old me. He made all that stuff. But he's still working on me. If we'd ever learn like that oak tree, if we'd ever learn like the poplar, whatever tree it is, if we'd ever learn like that tree. That tree only brings, uh, oak will only bring forth oak. An apple tree will only bring forth apples. I know that you have grafted some stuff in. I'm talking about the contrary. We've been grafted in. And you know what, when we get grafted in, you know what we're going to bring forth? Jesus. We're going to bring forth love. Just like Jesus. That's why he chose me. And remember this. This is where the Lord's teaching. Lord, I know it's just still coming. I can't help it. This love that he's put down inside of me, Brother Bo, when I got grafted in, I got to remember. I got to remember that he can take and take me out just like he did the ones that was already there. Do we understand that? We could be took out. Need to boast. No, please. Look out. Yes. When you think you done, you think you ain't gonna fall, you you're fixing to hit the ground face first. But it happens to them. Now I tree now more deals with me on stuff. I ain't wanna hit the ground face first. That hurts. In the nest where you're been running, you when I was younger, I had. I scooped up a whole mouthful of dirt. That hurts. And there's lots that's going to happen to get, get their eyes opened up. Right. And let the Lord talk to them and let the visitation change them. Okay. It's going to take God to change them. I can't do it. All I can do is preach. All I can do is be a light. All I can do is be a witness. But if we won't let Jesus change us, we're going to be in trouble. And I ain't saying you, God ain't changing this church. He's a change. It's, it's, a, it's a process of time. I didn't get here overnight. I didn't get to become a man just overnight in a week or two. It took a process of years. I was going to work on it for years, but we still ain't done. I just I said, we. We still ain't done. God loves you. Jesus loves you. I can go on and on because I, I love God's people. And I will help God's people. The Lord will. I have these here. Does anybody got any birthdays while I'm thinking? I know yours is not so. We are going to have the.